my little man has become sick. I lift the lid of the jar and delicately extract the tiny man, taking gentle care to ensure that I don't cause him any harm. He looks incredibly fragile, and in his weakened state, I know that I will have to take care of him with the utmost attentiveness. I hold the tiny man in my palm, taking in his small features and his frail frame. My love and concern for him swells, and I know that there is nothing more important than being there for him in his time of need. I place the tiny man onto the table before me and proceed to unwrap a small bandage from a fresh roux. Momentarily, I pick up a tiny spoon and dip it into a jar of honey before offering it to him to lick from its edges. As he swallows, I can hear a small weak cough. My heart goes out to him and I'm inspired to do everything in my power to help him regain his strength. One spoonful of honey leads to another and I also offer him some droplets of water using a small dropper. I have to be careful with how much I give him, but I'm vigilant in ensuring that he gets the right amount of hydration and nutrients to aid his recovery. As the minutes pass, he becomes more relaxed and starts to drift off into sleep. I place him back inside the jar, tuck him in with a miniature planket, and retreat back to my jar. I hold a cup of tea as I bask in the knowledge that I have done all that I can to nurse my beloved tiny friend back to health. I examine the tiny man once again and the worry lines on my forehead deepen as my heart sinks. He's sweating profusely and seems to be in an unbearable amount of pain. I knew that I had to take him to the only healer I knew, the town's medicine woman. As I lift the jar with the tiny man and wrap it in my shawl, I wonder what the other people in the village would say if they knew I was carrying a tiny person. But the need to help him was much greater than any fear of being judged. With determination, I make my way through the streets of the village, avoiding any obstacles that may cause harm to the tiny man. As I reach the medicine woman's hut, I pause for a moment, contemplating whether she would be able to help him or not. Without a second thought, I walk in and explain the situation to the medicine woman. At first, she looks at me with disbelief, but upon seeing the jar and the tiny person inside, she takes the matter seriously. I watch anxiously as she pulls out her herbs and starts mixing them, chanting softly as she analyzes the tiny man's condition. I hold my breath and she applies a pass to the tiny man's forehead, neck and chest. As I witness her tending to the tiny man, I find myself hoping that the healer's experience and knowledge could save him. Nevertheless, as we wrap up the treatment, the tiny man appears to be getting worse. The healer turns to me and speaks reassuringly. He's in very bad shape and I'm not sure if my medicine will work or not, but don't worry, I'll do everything in my power to help him. As I make my way back home, I hold out hope that the medicine women's treatment will work and ease the tiny man's pain. All I can do now is wait and pray. As I return home, I take away the shawl that wrapped around the jar and hold it close to my heart. The tiny man's condition weighed heavily on my mind and I found myself worrying incessantly. Days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months. I was unable to get any news about the tiny man's condition, which only made me more anxious. The healer was a recluse who kept away from the village social life and no one dared to ask her anything. As time passed by, my memory of the time I spent with the tiny man began to fade away, leaving only a faint clue that grew dimmer by the day. I tried to keep my mind occupied with other matters, but the worry still lingered. 
And then one fine day, a letter arrived. The healer had sent it, and as I unfolded it, my heart raced with anticipation. The letter read, "Healer's diagnosis reported questionable results." Tiny man has discontinued treatment and must lean on the might of his will, whether he shall live or whether he shall die. Only time will surely tell. At that moment, my mind was a blur. All the efforts we had made to save him, and now it's all came down to his will. Would he live?